welcome back. For this installment of our little series, Steph, the girls, and I ventured up north to Tawas Point State Park. On our last trip, we went freeway driving to Bay City and found the footage to be a little boring. So for this trip, we decided to get about halfway there on the expressway, then take back roads the rest of the way to get some better video that does a much better job showcasing the beauty of our great state. So here we are driving through the Bay City area. We're heading over the Lafayette Street Bridge that crosses over the Saginaw River. Not far from here is the USS Edson. The Edson is a Sherman class destroyer that was commissioned in 1958 and decommissioned in 1988. Unfortunately, we did not have the opportunity to see this. However, in the future, we're going to have to check it out. While on our travels, Steph and I decided to hit up a couple familiar places on the way. First was Judy's Famous Pies, a very cute little shop located on Huron Road in nearby Linwood. Well, damn, Judy's Pies is closed, so that was a bust. On to the next place, hopefully they're open. We are not sure if the business is permanently closed or if they were shut down for some other reason. Either way, no pie for us. Thankfully, we had better luck with our next stop. Not far from Judy's Pies is William's Cheese in Pecani. Once Rob improvised a parking spot, he quickly ran inside and grabbed the best cheese you could find in Michigan. If you like a kick, try their pepper jack. It's amazing. After that detour, it was non-stop to Tawas Point. few hours we made it to the campground. Tawas Point Park is about three hours north of Detroit. Based on our observations, it's one of the busiest state parks in Michigan. Normally, we reserve our site through Monday morning. One thing we've always noticed is most of the campgrounds we stay at empty out on Sundays. This was not the case at Tawas State Park. And for good reason. This park is amazing. It is located on a peninsula and is very walkable. You could easily make your way to the east side of the grounds and view the sunrise from the beach off Lake Huron, then head out later to the west side of the peninsula for the sunset viewed from the Tawas Bay side. point has been affected by the rising water levels so much that a good portion of the park is still flooded from earlier this year despite the fact that it's been relatively dry this summer. This line of trees is normally on a beach that connects to the day use area to another patch of sand that is accessed by trail. Not only is the beach partially underwater, the trail appeared to be as well. Located within the grounds of Tawas Point State Park is this lighthouse. The Tawas Point Lighthouse was in operation for 140 years and was retired in 2016. We were unable to tour the building during our visit as it was shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. This beacon sits almost in the middle of the peninsula and can be seen during the daytime all the way from the other side of the bay. The lighthouse is accessible by foot through the campgrounds or by car through the day use driveway. When we visited, the day use road was closed due to high water and storm damage. Originally commissioned in 1853, the original lighthouse was much closer to the shore. Shifting sands extended Tawas Point by nearly a mile. In 1867, the structure had fallen into disrepair. After a captain named Olmsted ran his sailboat aground, it was decided by the Lighthouse Board to rebuild. In 1875, Congress approved $30,000 to erect a new light station. With inflation considered, that would be around $700,000 in 2020. This 70-foot tower is that building. There are no known images of the original lighthouse in existence. 
The house attached to the tower was not built on location. Rather, it was moved from town and placed on the foundation back in 1922. It was the keeper's dwelling until 1953 when Tawas Lighthouse was automated and the station was closed. The Coast Guard sold the station to Michigan's DNR in 2001 and has been a tourism destination since 2003. One thing that's interesting about Tawas Point were all the little walk paths around the park that led right up to the shore. There is even a beach intended just for your four-legged friends. We ventured out there, but Dakota didn't seem interested. She doesn't want to be any part of this. She's never been in water. Steph and I enjoy wandering around looking at how other people set up camp. We tend to learn some new method. While we were visiting Tawas, there was a decent thunderstorm one morning that took out power to not just the city of East Tawas, but most of the surrounding areas for several days. We managed to luck out and be on the park's backup generator for most of the trip. These sites, unfortunately, were all unusable due to high water. It is right there just past the trees. The cabins over there on this side have been temporarily closed as a result. As you can see, most of the beach is underwater. On the east side of the park is the Day Use Beach. The first full day we were at Tawas Point, the entry road was actually open to drive up to the parking lot adjacent to the beach. The next day, it was closed. Much of the ground around the area has sitting water and many of the walking paths are flooded. There's still much to explore when it all dries out, of course. The bathhouse has been closed until further notice as well. The area appears to be on its way back to normal operation, but for now it's out of order. Also closed for our trip was the Tawas Grill and their Lighthouse Gift Shop. We have traveled to many of Michigan's great state parks, and despite its flooding problems at the moment, Tawas Point State Park really stood out to us. We will most assuredly be back in the near future. That's all for now. We'll be on our way back out soon.